Hey, what's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to talk about spawning projectiles, lots of them. If you play a game that has lots and lots of projectiles, typically any bullet hell, chances are there's a certain design pattern at work, one you may call object pooling, and possibly a data-oriented architecture as well. In UE to fire a projectile, the naive method would be to create a projectile actor class add a projectile movement component to it, as well as a static mesh component, plus some kind of volume component to trigger hit and overlap events and do stuff upon impact. The actor's set lifespan method may also be used to prevent the projectile from existing for too long in case it doesn't hit anything. Pretty basic stuff, right? Voila, you got yourself a projectile actor that you can spawn at will to fire bullets. Pew pew pew! However, that's really not a great method. First, spawning an actor is no joke for the CPU. The engine has to do a lot of work. Memory has to be allocated. The actor needs to be initiated and registered. Components must also be created and registered. The scene hierarchy must be built with a bunch of inverse transforms. Components that need to check for collisions need to be registered by the physics engine and so on and so on. It's not an insane amount of work, spawning one actor is unlikely to trigger a hitch during gameplay, right? But spawning many actors per second for things like projectiles can lead to a lot of troubles. Second, actors spawned need to be destroyed, and destroyed actors need to be eventually garbage collected. And that's even more work for the CPU. It's also very inefficient overall because each actor is individually ticked and the data is likely stored in random places in memory, resulting in a lot of cache misses. So this method is going to put a lot of strain on the engine and the garbage collector. Not great. It'd be much better to have the data for all projectiles packed super tight in memory, and take them all in one go, right? Well, that's what I'll be demonstrating today. Keep in mind that I'm going to show a blueprint implementation, so by definition, it's not going to be efficient. But it will do the trick to show the concept, the ID. Once familiar with it, a much more performant C++ version should be fairly easy to implement. Also, keep in mind I'm not a professional programmer, and I'm self-taught, so I don't know everything. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if you see things that could be improved. Alright, so the idea is pretty simple. Rather than spawning projectiles on the moon when firing a weapon, the better alternative is to pre-spawn enough projectiles ahead of time and to keep them dormant in a pool. Upon firing the weapon, pick a projectile from the pool, and when you're done with it, put it back in the pool. This simple design helps performance for many reasons. First, the cost of spawning actors can be paid ahead of time, say when the game starts. Thus, firing many projectiles is just a matter of picking existing actors from the pool, and that cost should, in theory, be substantially lower compared to spawning actors on demand. Second reason, actors are never destroyed and merely put back in the pool. Thus, actors are never garbage collected, which can be a costly operation that causes hitches. Moreover, because all actors are spawned one after the other, they should, in theory, be much more tightly packed in memory. And that's much better for memory access and is much more cache friendly. However, again, this is a blueprint implementation, so one should not take memory management too seriously. There's only so much you can do in blueprints, and it's hard to know what really happens under the hood with the virtual machine doing its own thing and all. Anyway, the idea again is to pre-spawn a bunch of projectiles. So I created a single actor called Projectile Manager that does precisely that upon begin play. Just have to ensure actors are hidden at first and that no collision is enabled. Then to fire a projectile, the goal is to get the Projectile Manager. In blueprints, that's a bit annoying to do, but a get all actors of class node that you call just once to cache the result can do the trick somewhat efficiently. In C++, you could, for instance, create a subsystem that you can very easily access from anywhere. That's much better. 
Anyway, once that is done, you can pick the first available projectile from the pool, keep track of the last index picked, tag that index as used, get the projectile actor at that index, and do stuff like make it visible, enable collision, and so on and so forth. It's like you spawned a new projectile actor, but at a much smaller cost. Now, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Pooling objects is great, but it may come with memory management complications for the very simple reason that it's hard to know ahead of time how many projectiles you'll need at a given time, right? So it's best to play it safe and create a pool with enough projectiles. But that means a decent amount of memory is allocated just for that pool, some of it probably wasted on projectiles that are going to remain dormant, unused. Also, in the event that a projectile must be spawned but none is left in the pool, the pool size may need to be dynamically resized and new actors may need to be spawned. So there are a couple of gotchas to keep in mind. As usual, no solution is perfect. Just have to learn to live with the cons to take advantage of the pros. Now, pre-spawning a bunch of actors is great and all, but it's still not ideal. It remains a heavy object-oriented design and each object, each actor, contains a lot, variables and functions, and most are probably unnecessary for a simple projectile, right? Plus, drawing, say, 100 unique projectiles one by one is not ideal. It'd be better to have the position of 100 projectiles and draw them all in one go using instancing. And that's where data-oriented programming can come into play. I'm going to assume a projectile is made of very few variables, a position and a velocity, a type described with an integer, maybe zero is a bullet, one is a missile or something, a pointer to know who fired that projectile, and finally a boolean to know if that projectile is in use. So I could simply make a struct containing these variables and make an array of struct to create a pool of projectiles. Or I could also make a unique vector array for the projectile's positions, one for the velocities and so on. Again, I'm no expert when it comes to programming. I've seen both implementations, so you do you, I suppose. If you want to learn more on the subject, the first method is called array of structure. The second method, structure of arrays, and it's a great debate in programming. Each has its pros and cons. UE's lightweight instancing system uses a structure of arrays, and I believe that's a bit more efficient when trying to scan the pool for an entry that is free to use. Just have to fetch memory for that specific boolean array and that's contiguous in memory so very fast. Anyway, initiating the pool is simply a matter of resizing each array. Then picking a projectile from the pool is simply a matter of looping through the boolean array and returning the first entry that is false, starting from the entry I last successfully picked. The projectile at that index can then be used, meaning set its position, velocity, type and owner. Also, I'm using a timestamp and lifetime arrays to manage the projectile's maximum age. Then, using a single tick event, which tick rate can be set to, say, 60 FPS, I iterate the entire pool and do an early exit if the projectile is not in use. Else, I do a line trace from the projectile's current position and its next predicted position based on its velocity. If there's a hit, I can send damage to the hit actor and kill the projectile. Else, keep going and check for the projectile's age. And that's pretty much it. In my character, I may then get the bullet manager singleton, or create it if needed, to fire a projectile. Keep in mind this is a blueprint implementation, so don't expect this to perform incredibly well. Just doing a for loop with that many entries has a cost because of the virtual machine overhead. However, port this to C++, use async traces, and you'd have a very decent base implementation. Now, having debug line traces is cool, but what about displaying projectiles? Well, remember I mentioned instancing. And actually, I'm not going to use an instance stick mesh component, I could, but I'm rather going to leverage Niagara to very efficiently draw all the projectiles in one batch. So, using a Niagara system with a couple of array user parameters, 
I can send the projectiles arrays to Niagara each tick. Keep in mind this does come at a cost and it'd be better to send just one array, meaning pack the position, velocity, type and usage in one single array. This however would come with some complications, so for the sake of this video I'm going to keep things simple. So using a single spawn burst module, I'm spawning one particle per projectile. Next, using a custom module, for each particle, thus for each projectile, I'm simply accessing the corresponding entry in each array to drive the particle's position, velocity and visibility depending on if the projectile is used or not. The projectile's type could be used to drive the particle's color and could be sent to the particle's material to draw different visuals, right? And that's pretty much it. Now I can lower the tick rate of this costly function even more, say 15 fps. Gotta be cautious though, tracing for hits is most likely critical for the gameplay experience, so ticking projectiles at such a low fps is probably not a great idea, but it's to illustrate what's possible. See, this is quite horrible, but arguably, meh, it could be precise enough to detect hits. Probably not if you're building the next top tier competitive fps game, you get my point. Anyway, I can keep tracing for hits at this rate and smooth out the visuals. Using a simple timestamp mechanism, I can simply say to that Niagara system, hey, this is the last time these arrays were updated. And so in the particle update function, I can predict where the projectile should be according to its velocity and last update timestamp. And voila, each particle keeps moving forward in between ticks just the right amount. Kinda cool. Alright, what about projectile impacts though? Well, somewhat recently, Niagara data channels were added to Unreal Engine, and it precisely aims to solve some of the issues I explained in this video. Spawning a unique particle system per hit is really not great, even though Niagara particle systems are pooled by design. It'd be better to have one particle system that handles all hits. And that's precisely what Niagara data channels allow you to do. Here I keep track of each projectile that resulted in a hit. I write that info in a global Niagara data channel. Using a single Niagara particle system, I spawn particles for each entry in the channel. And upon spawn, I get the data contained in the channel to set the particle's initial velocity, color and whatnot. And voila, projectiles are drawn using a single Niagara system, and all hits are drawn using a single Niagara system as well. The projectile's data is nicely packed into memory and quote-unquote efficiently managed. Again, this is a crude blueprint implementation, so don't take this too seriously. But that's the kind of designs that are typically used in games to handle and render large amount of entities. UE's mass entity system uses similar principles to keep things tight in memory and iterate over the relevant data in a very efficient manner. And that's how you go from having poor performance using a naive approach, where one entity is a unique actor that does its own thing, to very high performance where data is efficiently processed and rendered in a single batch. Voila, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. Files are available as a tier 1 reward on my Patreon. Consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you liked the video. And thanks to all my patrons for the incredible support. Alright, I'll see you in the next video, take care of yourself, bye bye!